Hey Golden Eagles and welcome back to Eagle Interview. I'm your host Kaylin Moran and today we have two very special guests joining us in the studio. We have Dr. Leah McSorley from International Student and Scholar Services and Miss Abby Phillips from the Study Abroad Program. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thanks Thanks. for the invitation. Yes, of course. So, Dr. McSorley, do you kind of want to give us an introduction on what the International Student and Scholar Services is? Sure. So, we work with all international folks, um, both students that are here um, on exchange programs for a temporary basis, as well as degree-seeking students, bachelors and graduate students, all the way up to PhD, as well as research scholars who are conducting research under the various labs around campus. And Ms. Phillips, what is the study abroad program? Yeah, so our study abroad office is able to send USM students abroad to about 12 different countries around the world where you can earn USM credit while getting financial aid to help pay for it, which is always a bonus. But then they get to leave the country while still earning that credit that they need. Mm -hmm. And what are the eligibility requirements for students to be able to go on these trips? Yeah, so students just simply have to have a 2.25 GPA and not be in um, academic uh, probation or anything like that. So you have to be in good standing with the university and have that 2.25 GPA. It's awesome to know that it's so open to so many different students on campus. Mm -hmm. Like it's a really great opportunity for those who are interested. And speaking of uh, something that students might be interested in, it's International Students Week um, here on USM's campus. So um, Dr. McSorley, how do you think students are going to experience this week? What do you hope that they gain from this? Yeah, so we are excited to partner with the Office of Study Abroad, the Cook Library, um, Campus Recreation, and tons of other um, student organizations, including the International Student Cultural Organizations who I work with. Um, and each of us are kind of bringing a different spin to what international education means um, to USM. And so for the student organizations I work with, um, they have proposed and coordinated and planned on a variety of really excellent um, educational programs and opportunities for cultural exchange between international students and the USM community. So, um, for example, on Tuesday, we will have had a, um, a campus diversity fair along with a study abroad fair. We have a coffee hour with our Pakistani Student Association, um, and we just completed our Tihar um, cultural event with the Nepali Student Association where they helped explain what is Tihar, and it's a very important celebration in Nepal. So I think it gives our international students a chance to show off a little bit about their culture and also bring a little bit of the world here to USM in Hattiesburg, where um, we don't always get that type of exposure. Right, right. It's really important for students to be able to have that exposure and like see the world culturally and experience it with their friends and stuff. So, Ms. Phillips, what do you think about International Student Week as well? Is there anything special study abroad is putting on? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got tons of programs um, today. In fact, we are about to have our British Studies Time for Tea. It's at noon in the Cook Library. So if you have a chance, stop by. We are going to be talking about the British Studies program that day. And then um, this afternoon, we are going to have a really important discussion with the NAACP and um, the ACS organization. They're going to be talking about what it's like um, for their different students, both here at campus, um, but also just out in the world in general, too. So it's going to be a really important conversation um, that they're going to have. So we're excited about that. Um, but then today is also going to be the last day where you can vote for your favorite photo. We've had some really good student um, pictures that they have submitted and students here on campus have had all week to be able to vote for their favorite and the winner gets passed on to the statewide competition. So um, last year the USM representative is the one who won the state photo contest. So we are very excited about that. So if you haven't done that yet, feel free to stop by the union and get that vote out too. 
That is so exciting. Oh my gosh. I'm really happy that there are so many different like opportunities and different events and programs happening on campus. It's so important that, you know, like we said earlier, that there are these examples of, you know, different cultures on campus just to get a, a wide uh, and diverse range of people and such. And speaking of like these programs, I noticed they offer like a lot of different resources talking about like just vocabulary and experiences. Mm -hmm. So diving into resources, what do you think the ISSS, what kind of resources does it offer for its students? How does it make sure that these students are as supported and comfortable as they can be while they're studying in another country? Great question. So I always say about half my job is immigration compliance, which is um, making sure the students understand the rules to be um, students here at USM and can then successfully graduate and work potentially in the US or anywhere around the world. Um, the other half of my job is a little bit more fun. It's cultural support and adjustment transition. And so we do orientations. We have workshops to make sure students um, understand uh, different opportunities available related to work in the United States. Or sometimes we just do fun stuff learning about uh, US American culture like uh, painting pumpkins, talking about Halloween uh, is something we just finished doing. That is so much fun. And Ms. Phillips, what about you? Um, how does the study, ab uh, study abroad program offer support to its students who are traveling internationally? Yeah, so we really like to look at study abroad from A to Z. So our office gets to go alongside students from the time that they are expressing interest in the program through their application process. Then we have pre-departure, where we get into all the fun, nitty-gritty things, um, making sure that students are ready to go to a different country, whether that is an English-speaking country or um, one where they may have to learn the language. Um, but then we've got staff that are on-site with them the entire time that are, that are their on-site support, which is really helpful for students. Um, and then we're here on the return, where people um, often experience reverse culture shock coming back into the state. Um, so we are here to provide resources, whether um, those are booklets or just to be a lending ear as well. Um, we are always excited to talk about study abroad. So I know we have some students who stop by our office just to talk about something that has come up that reminds them of being abroad. So we're happy to talk to them about that anytime. Yes, I love to see that there are so many really, really good resources and support systems on campus. Speaking about the study abroad program a little bit more, what kind of countries does USM partner with and what sort of fields of study does the university offer programs for? Yeah, well, the good thing is all of our programs are open to all majors and minors. So if we've got something for your specific major or minor, that's great. Otherwise, it's going to be counting as an upper level elective, which all USM students need to graduate. So that's covered regardless. Um, some of the countries that we tend to focus on tend to be Western Europe. Um, so we've got a lot in the UK, then we've got France, Spain, and Italy. So those are probably going to be kind of our, our big hitters. Um, but then we've got programs in Japan and Germany. We've got exchange partners in Peru and in the Netherlands. Um, so basically, we've got things, hopefully, that are going to interest any student on campus. Um, you just got to start by talking with us, and then we can help you figure it out from there. Right, right. There are a lot of different um, countries and such, and I was able to look at your website to be able to get an idea of what programs in different countries were offered to go travel to. So speaking of um, like traveling and such, how do you think that you know these different programs can maybe improve in the coming future? Like how do you think they can just um, be better or what are your personal goals and uh, motivations for maybe future improvements? Dr. McSorley? Sure. So. Um we right now have over 800 students from 80 different countries, so we really hope to sustain that. It has been a, a really record growth really in the past couple of years. And we also wanna make sure our students feel supported, that we have a transparent office, that they can get the information they need at their fingertips. So we're working to improve every day, and if any students have any suggestions um, for the Office of International Student and Scholar Services, please feel free to email us at intl 
at usm.edu. Um, and again, we have drop-in hours daily every single day, um, or you can schedule an appointment with myself or one of our advisors. <laughs> Wow, you answered that question so well. I, I think you answered my next one. Where can students go to get more resor uh, resources and updates about information from the International Student Scholar uh, Services? Yeah, so we are located in the International Center building, um, and we are located on the second floor, room 205, and um, then our friends in study abroad are just upstairs on the fourth floor. Mm -hmm. Yes, and back to you, Ms. Phillips. How do you hope to grow the study abroad program in the coming years? Yeah, so basically we always want our student population here at USM to kind of drive what we do because it's obviously there for you guys. Um, so we are always trying to adapt to figure out what is best in um, what students here on campus need. So we recently have been really trying to make sure that we are hitting programs that are for the majors here on campus. So um, we, for example, example, are always trying to get um, students in interested in computer science and we are working on developing programs that are going to be for that um, constantly growing major. Um, so we want to be sure that we are offering programs that meet the students needs where they're at. Um, so just like um, Dr. McSorley said, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to reach out to us study abroad at usm.edu. That's great. Um, and I know you already said this, but where can other students go to if they're like more interested in about in-depth information? Mm -hmm. They can just go to the website or make an appointment. Is that over? Yeah, correct? absolutely. So our website's going to be the best resource um, for any of the program details that we have currently on offer. But you can also set up an appointment there on the website. We are also really active on Instagram, so at um, Study Abroad USM, and just feel free to DM and we'll answer any questions. Mm -hmm. Well, that was really incredible. It was so like honoring just to sit down with you both. I can tell you're very, very passionate about your jobs and it's really exciting, especially this upcoming week. I cannot wait to get to see all of the cultural celebrations and experience it. So thank you both so much for sitting down with me today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of course, yeah. of course. And thank you, Golden Eagles, for sitting down with us too. My name is Kaylin Morin and I have been your host and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.